that was clearly the discovery of the giant magnetoresistance effect which occurs in layered magnetic structures. So it was one of the uh, first in inventions or findings in layered magnetic structures which led to an application. This effect is based on the spin-dependent scattering of electrons. So if you have electrons in a solid and a magnetic field or a magnetization, then it has been shown by Stern and Gerlach that you can have only spin-up and spin-down electrons, so two, two kinds of electrons. And later on, Mott came up with the idea that the scattering of these electrons can be different, which is called spin-dependent scattering of the electrons. And in layered structures, one can now exploit this effect for sensor materials, which sense in a very sensitive way magnetic fields and magnetizations. So that was our discovery, parallel to our discovery in Jülich. It was also found by a French group around Albert Fert in Orsay, uh, only that he discovered the effect in multi-layers and the effect was much stronger. Uh, we had only double layers, so it was somewhat weaker, but anyway, it was the same effect as we found out when we met for the first time in a conference. In Well, the main application and I think also some breakthrough for the whole effect that, that, it, is, that it also became famous, the, this effect, was the application in hard disk drives for magnetic media, for reading out information from, in magnetic storage from magnetic media. And there it led uh, to the possibility, finally, to have uh, storage densities or storage capacities, I should say, on hard disks on the order of many gigabytes. So that uh, can be seen as, uh, as the result of this invention and this finding. In, in spintronics, as we call this whole field now, because apart from the electron charge, also the spin is being used for in electron transfer and for currents and so on. In spintronics we have uh, the hope that we also can build one day magnetic random access memories which work, which uh, could uh, replace today's dynamic random access memories in computers. And the advantage would be that uh, the information is not lost when you turn the computer off. But these are non-volatile media which hold the information uh, whereas the, the present uh, magnetic, uh, dynamic random access memories do not hold the, the, hold the information and the information is lost when you turn the computer off. And therefore you have uh, also, when you switch the computer on, always wait for some time until the programs are loaded and so on. So this is one hope that, as I said, we can have one day uh, these magnetic random access memories which would fulfill that purpose. Well, I think uh, we are somehow obvious that today's problems are environment, are CO, CO2 exhaust, uh, energy problems, uh, oil resources will be running out in, in a limited time, or in foreseeable time, I should say and uh, certainly there should be a lot invested in, in order to be able to tackle the future. I can only say for me, and as I am speaking on the behalf of my wife, who he thinks the same, it was a great benefit to spend some time in a foreign country uh, abroad, and I would recommend it any time to young people to do that. I mean, it's not absolutely necessary. You can also do traveling and so, but for, for us it was very important. Simply also to, to live in another culture or to experience another culture in the genuine own language, that was for us a great experience. 
And when we came back from Canada, we traveled a lot uh, also in England because we su suddenly missed the English-speaking environment. Then we came to London and we had that again. And we went every evening, we went to the theater and uh, to concerts and so on. Enjoyed a lot the culture and it was it's a special experience to have the culture, as I said, in the own language, in the genuine language of the other country. That is a special experience. Well, if you have some idea and you, or you think you have a very good idea to, to do some project, to, to get some, some achievement or get something through which is important, I think what you can, or probably what you have to do, is to look around where you have institutions where this topic is being treated, or research centers where they work on this particular uh, topic, then you can apply there for, for, for a scholarship or so, or even get a grant uh, to work on such a topic, and then you can try to realize that. I named already one example, that would be the magnetic random access memory, but there are also other possibilities, and people are partly also working on them already. That is, for example, the realization of spin currents. You can, spin currents is that you have a spin polarization of the current, normally you have a spin polarization of the electrons in a, in a static way, in a ferromagnet, so you have more up electrons than down electrons, and that establishes the magnetization of the material. But now the new possibility is to have in a flowing current also a spin polarization, so you can transmit, you can, in a way you can say, you can f make magnetism flow uh, like in a current. So these are all exciting new ideas and possibilities and it, I think it's very attractive to work on these.